In the last video, you learned how to build Pascal's triangle. And I told you the reason that we build it is it's a good tool to help us solve certain kind of problems. And one example of those kind of problems is the one you see on the board here, where we've got a binomial x plus 3, and we've got to expand that by raising it to the sixth power. Now, without Pascal's triangle, the way we would have to do that is we would have to take the x plus 3, and we would have to write it six times. And then we would use the distributive law successive times to do the multiplication. So let's just do part of that problem here real quickly. Let's go ahead and multiply these two factors first. And when we multiply these two, we've got x times x is x squared. x times 3 is plus 3x. 3 times x is plus 3x. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so now we factored those two. We would simplify it. Now we can combine these two 3x's into 6x plus 9. And now we would have to bring down the next factor of x plus 3 and do it all over again. Get a new answer and then do it again and do it again three more times. Now that's a lot of work and that's not how I want to spend my time if I've got an easier way to solve this problem. And the easier way to do it is to use Pascal's triangle. So get out the Pascal's triangle that you just built and let's take a look at how we could do it a little bit more quickly. Now the first step in using the triangle to expand this kind of problem is we take a look at what the power that we're expanding it to is. So in this case, we're expanding it to the sixth power. So that means in the triangle, we're going to use the numbers down here in the sixth row. So that's why I remember in the video on building it, I told you it's very important that you number these rows correctly. The top row is always going to be zero, and then you number it down all the way as far as you've built it. And the one that you've built should go all the way down to row 10. And by the way, hang on to this triangle because I'll let you use it over and over again when we encounter these kind of problems and you won't have to build one every time. So for this problem, because it's a power of six, we're going to use the sixth row. So we're going to take these digits in the sixth row, 1, 6, 15, 20, uh, 15, 6, and 1, and we're going to take them and write them on a piece of paper. Now I want you to write these on a separate piece of paper, not on the one that you built your Pascal's triangle on. Now, I've written them like this because I, I'm just going to run out of room here in the camera uh, angle. But if you can write them out all in a row, that's better. If you have to do this on your piece of paper, that's fine too. But make sure you leave plenty of space between the numbers because we're going to be filling in some other things to build the answer to this problem. Okay? I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, if you're not done, pause the video, and if you are, let's go ahead and keep rolling. Now, after we've got the numbers from the correct row of Pascal's triangle, we're going to take the two parts of our binomial, and we're going to fill them into what the answer is going to be. We're going to take the first part first. Whatever comes first in the binomial, we take that first, and we're just going to write it right next to each of these numbers. Now, I'm writing it so that this looks now like a 1x, this is a 6x, and in fact, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a multiple of 1x and 6x and 15x. We're going to build on that, okay? If this letter was an A, we would put A's in there. If it was a, a B or a 2B, we would put 2B in there, okay? And if it was a 2B, we would probably use parentheses so that we would know it's 1 times 2B. But in this case, we've got an x, so we're going to just stick with the x. Now we're going to take the second part of the trinomial, and in this case it's a 3, and we're going to multiply each of these terms by the 3. And I'm going to show the multiplication with the parentheses. Now, in our case, we've got a positive 3. If this was a negative number up here, we would put in a negative 3 or whatever the number was. 
if it was another variable name, like an A or a Y or any of those, we would put in whatever that second term is and put it in parentheses because that's going to help you remember that you're multiplying these eventually. Okay. Now the next step's easy. We're just going to join all these with a positive or a plus sign because in the final answer we're going to be adding these up. And now we're ready to put in the powers. Now the powers are also pretty easy. We start with the power that we're expanding to, it's 6, and we're going to number that first term with each of the powers. Okay? So I'm going to make x to the 6th. Now the next x is going to be 1 less, so it's going to be x to the 5th. And the next one is going to be x to the 4th, and this one's going to be x to the 3rd. This one's going to be x squared, x to the 1st, and x to the 0 power. Now that x to the zero power may look weird to you, so in a minute I'm going to review how you simplify that. You learned it in AG3, and you may be forgetting, but any term raised to the zero power is 1, and we're going to see how that plays in in just a second. Now we're going to take the second term, and we're going to number it with powers, but we're going to go in the other direction. We're going to start with zero, and then we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, Five and six. So let me quickly recap what we've done so far. We've got a problem, x plus 3 to the 6th power. That's called a binomial expansion. We're using Pascal's triangle to build the answer without having to multiply x plus 3 times itself six times. We used Pascal's triangle by taking the power, and that led us to row 6 of Pascal's triangle. And that gave us the coefficients 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. We then attached all uh, the, the first part of the binomial, x, 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 and then the second part of the binomial, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. 3. Then we laid in the powers of the uh, two factors. We started with the first factor, and we lay in... 6. We start with whatever the power of the binomial is, and we just assign sequentially lower power 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 to the x's. And then for the second term, we start with 0, and we put in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now this is the answer. All we've got to do is clean it up and make it look better, look, make it look more simple. So let's go ahead and start to do that. And I'm going to change colors of pen here. And let's simplify this first term. Now, we know when 1 is the coefficient of a term, it, it really doesn't change anything. So this is going to be 1 times all of this. So when 1 is the coefficient of a term, we really don't have to write it. x to the 6th is still going to be x to the 6th. So I'm going to write that. And then a minute ago, I said that any term whether it's a number or a variable, it doesn't matter. Any term, when you raise it to the zero power, it's equal to 1. So this is going to be x to the 6 times 1, or x to the 6. So there's the first term of our answer. Now we're going to come over here. We've still got a 6 times x to the 5th times 3 to the 1st power. Any number or variable raised to the 1st power is itself. So 3 to the first power is 3. And 3 times 16 is going to be 18. And then I bring down x to the fifth power. So the second term in our answer is 18x to the fifth. Now let's keep going. Here we've got a 15. Let's go ahead and deal with the numbers first. 3 squared is 9. So 9 times 15, when I multiply that out, and you can use your calculator to do that if you need to, gives me 135, and then I bring down the x to the 4th. Now, I want you to pause the video here, and I want you to continue to simplify the rest of these terms. Okay, now, if you're done, the 
final answer you should have should look like this. And of course, yours may be written all the way across on the sheet of paper. I ran out of room here. But the terms are x to the 6th plus 18x to the 5th plus 135x to the 4th plus 540x to the 3rd plus 1,215x squared plus 1,458 times x plus 729. Now let's just go back to the previous board and double check how we simplified that last one. Okay. The coefficient of 1 is still going to be a 1. x to the 0, we said before, any variable or number raised to the 0 power is 1. And then if you put 3 to the 6th in your calculator, you should get the quantity of, or the number, 729. So that's how that last one ended up being 729 and not having an X in it. So this should be your final answer. Now, if you didn't get this, I want you to go back and I want you to see if you can find where your mistake is. If you did get it, you've just done an example of using Pascal's triangle to expand a binomial. Now, it's a little bit of work, but it's not hard work. Most of the calculations are either ones you can do with mental math or you just pop right into your calculator. And it's a lot easier than taking x plus 3, writing it six times, and then doing that multiplication six times. So this Saturday night, when you're out with your friends, bring your whiteboard and show them how to do this. I guarantee you, you're going to be the most popular person in your group. Using Pascal's triangle to expand a binomial. And remember, have no fear.